Hey all, welcome to another mass transit video. Today I'm going to talk about something new, and that is mass transit written in TypeScript that can be used from Node.js. So one of the questions I get a lot is like, how do I interop with other languages? And I wanted to add support for Node, so I thought, why not do it? Why not learn TypeScript? And why not at least get some basic NPM out there that will get people started? Uh, in this case, I've done it with RabbitMQ. Um, and I haven't really gone further than that as far as you know, doing any transport independence yet. But I just kind of wanted to get a feel out there and, and kind of introduce it to people and let them see how it works. Um, so I'm going to show you how that works. And I'm going to go through a quick sample app I've created. The sample's up on GitHub, and I'll link that in the video. Uh, but until then, let's take a look at what we have. So first, what I want to do is I want to look at the mass transit code I created. So I created this sample using the .NET new templates that I just released. So I did a .NET new MT Docker, and I created this request service, and then I did the .NET new MT consumer to create a new check order status consumer. Now check order status is simple. It's a simple message. It just has an order ID in it. And you can see it's in the contracts namespace. It's in contracts because it, it doesn't tie it to the project. It doesn't tie it to anything. It's just contracts. That's all they are. And then I have a very simple consumer that just picks a random status and then responds with an order status saying what the order ID and the status is. Now, order status is just a little bit richer. It has the order ID and the status. Pretty simple. These are both records. Everything's fine. This is all set up. And like, like I said, I used the .NET new um, MT Docker project. So you have a program CS that's already set up for you and already does all the setup of the consumers. In this case, it's using RabbitMQ, which is also in the container. Or, I'm sorry, in the Docker Compose. Um, so I can, I can get that started up. I can just do a Docker Compose up. And I'm pretty sure that RabbitMQ is already running, but we're going to go ahead and bring up the worker. We can see we configured our order status endpoint. Um, that that's the check order status consumer, and that we have RabbitMQ running on the RabbitMQ endpoint. So if I go and check, I can see order status is right there. I did use a consumer definition to change the name of the endpoint to order status because I just wanted to define it and not tie it to the particular consumer. So I can see that that's there. I can go in here. I can look. There's the channel, the currently active consumers right there, prefetch count of 24. I guess that's math. I didn't change it, I just stuck with the defaults. Simple setup, running and off we go. Now let's go look at the node project that I created. So I created a simple index.js. In this case, I used the package.js includes, let's see, where is it? Mass transit rabbitmq, which is at the whopping 0.1.2 level. Um, and it is written in TypeScript, so there are types for it. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I have a simple build that uses TSC. The sample's written in TypeScript as well. And I'm going to go into this. So when I'm setting this up, I have, the, I have a message type where I set the default namespace to contracts because that's what my contracts are in in my .NET project. Uh, then I create a bus using mass transit, simple entry point. Uh, in this case, because I didn't specify a host, it's just connecting to localhost. Um, and then I create a request client. I get a client, I do a bus.request client, I pass the, the two different message types, check order status and the order status response. I specify the exchange that the request should be sent to. And then I specify the two message types, which I'm using new message type for check order status and order status. And this is because I don't really have reflection of generics in TypeScript because they don't work in JavaScript. So it's this is where I'm at. If someone is like an expert in this stuff and can, can recommend better ways, but this is what I came up with just learning TypeScript. Um, so I tell it the two different message types. And then I do a simple set interval to say every second, I'm going to do a client.get response where I'm going to pass the initializer for the check order status message where I just do an order ID equals gwid.create. Uh, and then I just two string that. And then I do a console log when it finishes because I'm using await. TypeScript, JavaScript all has this async await with promises, which is super slick, makes it so easy now. Um, and I'm just going to console log that out. If I do get an error, I'm going to write an error. And this will run until I get either a sigint, control C, 
Or if I just type quit and hit enter, I'll do a clean shutdown where I actually do await stop the bus. So super simple setup. Like I said, all this code will be in the sample project. That's it. The messages are, hey, guess what? Interfaces, because I love interfaces. Um, and they are in camel case because that's the way mass transit serializes JSON. And I found that if I made these uppercase, they didn't match. I'm using class transformer for serialization. So super powerful class, really awesome. But I couldn't figure out how to tell it to be case insensitive. So maybe that's not a thing. I don't know. Uh, feedback welcome on that. So anyway, my two interfaces, check order status and order status, two message types. Now when I want to bring this up and I just want to run it, first I'm going to jump over to my other window here. And now I'm going to do an npm start because I think I've already built it. And this is going to come up. You're going to see it's going to be connecting to localhost. It's connected. It creates that temporary bus endpoint just like mass transit and it uses that for the request client. And then it starts that receive endpoint, shows the consumer tag. Everything's very similar. You have receive endpoints, all of that kind of stuff. And now it's sending the request to that .NET consumer. Uh, I don't have any logging in the .NET consumer, so it's kind of boring over here, but uh, you can see that it's just randomly picking a number, picked, packed, shipped, packing, received, whatever. And all of that'll go until it runs. Um, so that's really it. You can create receive endpoints, and I don't have an example of that in this one, but if I wanted to create a receive endpoint, I could say bus.receive endpoint. You can see that I can pass the queue name, I can pass options, I can pass an initializer callback. So I could say that my queue name is you know, input queue, and my configurator is, let me see if I can do this right. I'm, I'm no expert here. Um, I don't have any handlers yet, huh. but uh, I'll do another video with how to do receive endpoints. I have an example in the source code on the NPM repo that uh, shows how to do it. I, I feel like I'm just gonna, to, gonna mess up if I try to do this right in line. Um, I think it's config.options. So I can do config.options queue name. I think I do like config.on or no, config.handle, yeah, and I pass the message type. So if I wanted to handle that get order status or check order status, I could then do a commit.handle. And then here I have to actually pass the message type. So I have to do like a new message type. Because again, I have to tell it the message type. Let's just call this check order status. There's no way to really inspect the generics in TypeScript. And then I have my listener, which is my Let's just call this my hand, or no, this is just like mass transit. So we're gonna do context, stop that, fat arrow. And if we look, yeah, I, I'm not entirely used to JavaScript quotes yet. But here, if you look, I have everything I would have. Context, response address, receive endpoint, um, request ID, message ID, conversation ID. I even have respond. So I can actually do a context.respond with order status. And then I would basically just new up that message. I do support the same kind of callbacks, so I can do context. Set. It has send context and consume context, uh, very much mirroring that. I think here I can just do like uh, order ID equals, or no, order ID colon. Maybe it's order ID equals. This is where I'm gonna like really stumble. Message dot order ID uh, status equals pending. Um, I think that's right. I don't think I did that wrong. And like I said, I can do the send context here as well. Oops, send context. And I could do like send context dot, uh, you know, all the different things. I could say headers, I can add headers to it. So I can say send context dot headers. All of that stuff is in there. Anyway. That's how you would create receive endpoints, and those just automatically start with the bus. You know, it's already started when you define a request endpoint, it starts consuming. It does handle reconnection and everything, so if you do have services running in there, it'll constantly reconnect. Um, I'm curious if this actually works. I'm not gonna do the send context part, but I'll do just this and see if it works. I think this might work. Let's check it out. Uh, let's do npm run build. It might work, it might not. Oh, I got an error, what did I get? Order ID, oh yeah, I knew that had to be a colon. I, I just, I knew it. I think, I think that's right. 
Like I said, I've known TypeScript for a whole two weeks now. So now, oh yeah, I gotta fix that one too. Status colon pending. And so if I do a start on that now, I should see that the receive endpoint started, input queue. If I go over to RabbitMQ and look, I now have that other queue. So there's the input queue. All is good. Um, and you can see the consumer is connected. It's that channel. It doesn't have a prefetch count. I guess I'm not setting prefetch counts yet. Big shock. Um, but yeah, so that's the, that's the basis of that right there. Um, in fact, let me try something funnier. Let's go ahead and quit out of here. Let's jump over here and let's do a Docker Compose stop uh, worker. Okay, so now we turned off the worker and we just, but we left RabbitMQ running. Now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna change this to, what was it called, order status? Was that the Q name? We'll see if this actually works. And if I do a respond with order status of pending, Let's see if I get this to run and build. And I might actually be handling that request response right here within the entire node application. So let's find out. We're gonna, it's either gonna die or not die, and it looks like it died. Even point started order status. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's working or not. It wants to, but it seems like it's failing. It must have done something stupid. I'm not sure I handled the message type right, maybe? Yeah, anyway, it should work. I don't know what I did wrong. Um, oh, promise, duh, oh wait. And I have to do this. I think I have to do, don't I have to do async context? Yes, let's try that one. Nothing like on the fly here to see if it all works. I have no idea if it's gonna work or not. We're gonna find out, still doesn't work, oh well. You get the point, it should work. I did something stupid, I'll have to go look at the sample. But uh, anyway, you can define receive endpoints, you can define um, all the different types. Um, yeah, so it's on npm. I think it's npmjs.packages slash mass transit rabbit MQ. It's in some early versions. PRs are suggested because like I said, this is a fairly new package. But uh, it definitely gives an example of how to bridge that gap. And it's, and it's a start of, you know, coming up with a, a mass transit for Node. So hopefully this has been interesting. Definitely give me some feedback. Um, the bits are up on uh, GitHub. I'll send a link to those. And uh, thanks for joining. Catch you next time.